Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA Stingray 120 build. So as you can see here, I've been working on the wing. And in this video, I want to get to the sheeting of the wing. I want to get the wing entirely sheeted, at least, the, at least these leading edge areas. But before I do that, I have to do a little prep work. All right, so as I mentioned in my last video, the wing spars actually extend above the profile of the rib and I have to sand those down to match the rib profile. So what I have right now, I'll just show real quick, is a profile like this where the spar is sitting up above the rib. Now, I have, like I said, I have to sand this down and I need to be really careful because as you can see, obviously, it's a small work area. It's a small surface area to be working on. And I want to make sure that as I'm sanding and shaping it, I'm not hitting the ribs or over sanding onto the ribs and so forth. So what I want to do is I want to prevent, I want to take down, take the top of the spar off like this, but I don't want to over sand and somehow sort of distort the rib itself. I want to keep that profile nice. So I need to be really careful. Okay, and as I mentioned in my last video, and as people have commented on, on the channel, is a really good way to sort of help minimize that and kind of protect your ribs from getting sanded or over sanded when you do this is to use masking tape to kind of cover the ribs and I did it on the bottom so let me flip the wing over so this is the top side real quick and I've worked on this and I've got this pretty close I have some areas I need to touch up but let me show you the bottom of the wing now one thing I'm doing is because of the dihedral in the wing I want to be careful not to damage it I don't want to press down on the wing by accident and then have it crack or something. So I have a nice towel underneath the middle of it here to kind of keep it propped up. Okay, so as you can see here, I put masking tape on either side of the spar and I just bring it right up to the spar itself and then I go along and I press it down on the ribs. And you can see, for example, let me grab a way of doing it here. You can get something like this, this little scale and I can press, you can see how I can press up against that. I can go along the rib and I can hit that spar. And that spar is probably somewhere on the order of, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth inch is too much, probably like maybe a thirty-second of an inch, like around a millimeter or so above the, above the rib. So you see, I need to go ahead and bring that down to match. So different ways of doing it is I can sand it with a block, like this sanding pad I have right here. And again, I want to be really careful when I'm doing it. I don't want to, you know, move off and hit, strike the rib and crack the rib. And I also don't want to you know, jam into this and then cut into the rib. So as you're bringing this down, what's going to happen is as you get closer and closer to the masking tape, you're going to start kind of obviously kind of sanding into the masking tape. And you'll start being able to easily kind of pick up when it starts to get thin. And you'll even may, you may even kind of hit it here and there and actually go through it. Now, if you get it, get it to that point where you've sanded it down pretty thin and you're starting to see the, 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 the rib kind of coming through, and you're not done yet, you can go ahead and put another layer of tape on. And you just keep doing that until you get where you want to be. So just got to be careful and work it. And, I'm gonna, and I want to work the entire rib, and I'm sorry, the entire spar, and make sure it's nice and even, and I want to check it as I go. Okay, so obviously this is a hardwood, and it's going to take a while to sand it down. I can work on this for a while and get it get it to match. And a couple other ways you can try doing it is again with a razor plane. And I've been playing with this one. And you can see I can kind of go around here and I can cut down with the razor plane. I need to be really careful. And again, I'm gonna have to go over the entire, it's best to do the whole thing at once, kind of work your way across the entire wing to make sure you have a nice even kind of approach to it. And you can see it's coming, I'm getting material off of here. I got to keep my razor plane clean as I do this. But I can go ahead and I can work the entire spar like this. Be really careful. And again, I'm going to be super careful that I don't kind of go off and snap into one of the ribs. All right, so then another way to kind of add to this is something that I just kind of just discovered recently. Now, I don't usually think of using power tools to work on RC planes. Obviously, with a drill, you know, I'll use a drill to electric drill to, to do things. But it's something big like this, that's something that I wouldn't usually use. But I actually have this 
Um, this is an oscillating uh, multi-tool for sanding and cutting and it has kind of a small head on it and I discovered that this actually works pretty well. I did, there was like a little short that I did on this, a little short that's kind of redundant, but I did a short on this where I showed some of this and I was actually kind of surprised when I first grabbed this, I thought this is probably gonna be too big to use for something like this because this is, you know, obviously this is relatively delicate compared to something kind of beefy like this guy right here. But actually it worked out pretty well and actually it turns out that I have a pretty good control with this. So I'm not saying go out and buy you know, an oscillating tool like this just to build RC planes. I just have it on hand for the, what I do, you know, around the house and such. But if you have one of these or other sanding, like another um, hand sander, which I, again, other people have mentioned on, on the channel. And if you have another one of these and you can just, you can very carefully try it and see if you can kind of work with it that way, because it is going to take time, like I said, to get this hardwood down. So let me show you that real quick. Okay, again, so this has this nice kind of triangular head on here, and I think this is around an 80 grit sandpaper, maybe maybe smaller, maybe it's 100 or something. And you know, I can be really careful with it, and it actually worked out okay. And you can see how fast that works and you can start seeing here like for example right here I kind of hit that masking tape and I know now I got to stay clear of this area all right so you can see there that it works really well but you got to be super careful so if you're going to do this, you know, just really take your time and be really careful. And if you're not comfortable doing something like that, obviously go back to just doing this. It takes a, it takes a little bit longer, but your chances of making a mistake are going to be a lot less. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start working on this wing and bring these spars down. And then we'll take a look at the leading edge here. Okay, well you can kind of see from the mess on my work table that I've been working on this wing and I've had a couple spots like I mentioned before when if I get to, if I kind of cut into or sand into the, the, the initial sort of layer of masking tape, I'll put a second little piece here and there to help continue to protect it. And I think I'm really close now, if you can kind of look closely and kind of see, like here's a good example, you can kind of see how the rib is sort of coming through a little bit and then I'm right there, nice and, it's nice and flush across that spar again like right here and other spots like this so yeah so I think I'm finished with this and then I also did the leading edge I cut the leading edge down and sanded it down and again there's going to be a piece that goes on top of this later but now what's going to happen I'm going to pull all this stuff off of here and then we're going to put the sheeting on the sheeting is going to go from the spar all the way to the to the edge over here it's going to obviously going to wrap over and and attach like that so what I want to do now is I want to pull off all this masking tape and then I got to clean up my workbench and then we'll move on to sheeting. All right, so my bench is nice and cleaned up again and now I'm ready to put the sheeting on the wing. I've got everything sanded down where I want it and now I can go ahead and attach it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this just basic tight bond wood glue. This is just a basic kind of old fashioned PVA glue. And the reason I'm going to use this instead of a CA is I want to have time to work with this. I have to put this sheet on here and I have to get it lined up and I didn't want this, I didn't want to use CA glue and have it set up on me before I had it all lined up. Okay, so the way this is going to work is the sheeting is going to attach to the spar and it's going to be flush with the rear edge of the spar like this and 
I'm just going to put the PVA glue down and then I'm going to just clamp it and hold it down and I'm going to let it cure. And then once it's anchored, once it's all cured up and it's anchored on there, and then we'll be able to just go ahead and bend this over and attach it to the ribs and also to the leading edge. Probably just going to use um, some masking tape to do that. And then we'll let it cure and then we'll trim the excess off the front up here. And then we'll do that to the bottom also. So, so I'm going to start by doing just the top side. I'm going to do this piece here and of course the one down here on that on the right wing. And then once that cures, we'll go ahead and then we'll bend it over and attach it. We'll trim it and then I'll flip the wing and I'll do the bottom. All right, so the sheet's just going to come down like I mentioned, parallel with the rear part of the spar. And let me move this over here. And then right here in the center, I'm just going to line it up with the center line, with the line in between the two ribs right here. And this will be where I start to line it up. And then it's going to hang over out on the tip and we'll, and we'll trim that. And then I'll put the other piece on this side. Now, one thing that's going to happen is sometimes these aren't perfect. So when I push this down and when I go ahead and, and get it glued to the leading edge, I may need to trim off um, a little bit of this here and there so that the two edges sort of line up with each other. So this side meets with this side. All right, so there we go. So as you can see, clamps are our friends and many of them are very useful. So I got these ones, I think at Harbor Freight. The other thing I didn't want to do is I want to make sure, you know, it's just kind of go over it and kind of clean up some of these little glue balls that kind of come squirting out of here because once they set up, they'll be harder to remove and harder to sand out and they're not so, important to, to, to kind of get them out of this area but right here we're going to put these little cap strips on top of the ribs and then this needs to be a clean kind of contact right in here so i'm just going to go around and just make sure i don't have any glue on there you know obviously i can kind of cut it and sand it out later if i have to but i like to try to minimize that if i can so, all right so let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit and then once this cures we will do the other wing okay so this is a water-based glue and it's going to take about 24 hours for it to cure up according to the instructions on the back so i'm going to go ahead and let this sit overnight and it'll be fully cured and this will be nicely anchored onto the spar i'll remove the clamps and i'll do the right wing and then once i have both the sheets on then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap it down to the leading edge and i'll do the entire wing at once
Okay, so I have these two top sheets now attached to the spar. And now the next step is gonna to be to attach it to the ribs and bend it down over to the leading edge. So it's just gonna be brought down like this and attached as I just mentioned. I'm gonna be using, again, I'm gonna be using just my basic wood glue for this. And then I'm basically gonna be strapping it down using some masking tape. I'm just gonna put a bunch of strips of masking tape and just kind of hold it down like that. So the one thing about this is the instructions say to use a thick CA and they say in the instructions they had to go ahead and kind of pull up the sheet and apply you know ca to like all of these all of the ribs and then go ahead and put it and then use like a long straight edge and sort of push the whole thing down at once and then kind of secure it that way i just look at that as being a little bit too cumbersome and i also think that the ca is going to set up way too fast even the thick ca um, because you have to cover a lot of area i have to put glue on all of these ribs and then, on, then also on the leading edge. And I just worry that I won't have enough time. So I think the, the ticket's gonna be to use just the basic wood glue. Now the other thing about it is that this is a big bottle and it's got this, you know, this tip on here. And it's gonna be kind of hard, I think, to kind of get it up inside here. If you, oops, I should put it down here. It's gonna be hard to get the bottle, kind of pry this up and get the bottle down inside here. Um, I can do it from the bottom of the wing. I can flip the wing over, obviously, and I can apply it from down, down on this side. That's gonna be an issue though on when I go to sheet the bottom half because I won't be able to do that. So in any case, I'll just, I'll just kind of figure it out as I go. But I think what I'm gonna try for the top wing is to get a brush and probably just put some of this in a little dish and then just get a brush and sort of brush it on from the bottom and see how that works. All right, so if I wasn't doing this on camera, I would be setting this up a little differently than what I'm showing here, but just to kind of demonstrate what I'm gonna do. And I don't know if, I thought about getting a little dish out or a little container or a little cup like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue in here. It comes out and there we go. Gotta open the lid or open the cap. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue in here. And then I'm just gonna try to use this brush to kind of just to get it down on the rib. Just kind of get it in here. Like so. And I'm just gonna go ahead and work my way across the wing. And as you can tell, it's gonna take some time to get glue on here. So I wanna work quickly, because even though this stuff does take a while to set up, it does soak into the wood and it does start to set up relatively quick. So I wanna work fast not only do I have to get the glue on here, then I have to work with the, the sheet to get it down on top. So I'm just gonna move right along here. Okay, so now I got the wood glue on and I'm gonna grab some tape now and I'm gonna start trying to sort of strap this leading edge down. And again, I'm gonna try to do it on camera a little bit. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna put my tape closer to the rib because I don't want it to distort the, the sheet too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it straight down on here. And I may have to go back and move some of these guys once I get it going. So I'm gonna go about every other rib right now. Pull it over. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work with this wing and try to get it all down nice and tight on top of here and then we'll come back. All right, so now I have the top sheet attached to the leading edge and to the ribs. Now I did run into a little bit of a tr trouble and I'll try to describe what happened here. So, you know, when I put the sheeting down, I didn't trim the sheet back. And that's kind of, that's per the instructions. It's that they basically was left wide and then you trim it off later. Well, the problem that I ran into was when I was trying to pull, use the tape sort of like strap and kind of pull this over. What it did, if this makes sense, is as I was pulling down on the outside, it was sort of raising kind of here in the middle. 
so it was kind of raising off of the ribs so I really had to work with it to get it to lay down you know nicely and so the way that I sort of address that on this side I trimmed I trimmed that sheet back to where it was almost at the leading edge as you can see here and then by doing so when I pulled the tape over it didn't really have that sort of almost like a lever kind of effect it wouldn't it didn't pop up the the sheeting here so it was easier to put it on that way so that's something to consider if you want to do it this way other ways to do this is to get like a lot of weights like sandbags or weight like kind of weighted bags people do it that way or put a whole bunch of weights on it and get it to sort of roll over that way you can try it that way also and I just thought I would try it this way okay so I'm going to go ahead and let this cure overnight and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put the bottom sheeting on all right so I let this cure overnight and now I'm going to remove all of the masking tape carefully and then I'll do the same thing. I'll attach the sheeting on the lower part of the wing. Okay, well, as you can see, I got my two sheets now on the lower part of the wing clamped on, and now it's got to cure up. And I actually went to Harbor Freight today, and I bought a whole bunch of more clamps, and they're pretty nice, pretty cheap. And I'm also using this leftover balsa stock material from the ribs to help protect from scarring up or denting up the sheeting. I should have done that on the other one, but anyhow, I'm doing it on this one, and that'll be helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this cure and come back to it later and we will then trim again trim off the front part here and then go ahead and attach it to the leading edge Okay, well there it is. The leading edge sheeting on the top and bottom is now attached. And now I can move on to my next step, which will be in my next video on this, which is gonna be to add 
the leading edge rectangular stock material that gets shaped and then also the cap strips that go in each of the ribs and then eventually there'll be some sheeting that goes in the center section here but I think we hold off on that so that's it for now and like always thanks for watching my channel I always appreciate it and we'll see you next time